Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine Game series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we are taking a look uh, at a game from the TCEC Cup. Uh, it's Eki Satum against uh, Stoflace and uh, yeah features uh, an engine that I hadn't uh, heard of before, Eki Satum and uh, against uh, obviously the very strong Stoflace winner of the uh, ICGA World Computer Chess Championship. Um, yeah, Stoflace is normally the one producing spectacular games, but here Ekisatum played a really lovely attack, and uh, I just really wanted to share that with you. So let's have a look how this attacking position arose. So e4, e6, knight c3, b6, d4, bishop b7. I think that this was the uh, the book until now. So it's an Owen defence where White has played um, knight c3 quite early. Um, that's um, uh, probably not the best setup for white. Um, it's much more normal to play have a, a setup where the bishop on d3 covers the pawn on e4, and you play c3 to support the pawn on d4. But this is still, you know, a very nice advantage for white. Um, and what Eki Satan did was quite nice. Uh, played bishop d3 here. Um, a3 uh, was played by uh, dragon against stockfish just to stop uh, the bishop coming to b4. But that's not really clear that that's so necessary. Bishop d3, uh, played by um, uh, Echisatum, and then knight f6, and then knight g e2, which is quite interesting. The idea is that um, after bishop b4, white can now simply castles, and if bishop c3, then knight takes c3, defends the pawn on e4. So it's quite a quite a nice way of, um, of developing rapidly and avoiding black's main threat for pressure against the white centre. Um, one of the funny things was was that uh, you know I played uh, some engine games here, and um, well instead of knight e2, um, I think it was Stockfish that wanted to play the move h4, h4 in every single position. Obviously slightly anticipating a um, a French structure with d5, e5 when you know the move h4 is always useful. But I didn't think that was quite uh, quite stunning really. Uh, so uh, a6 was the follow up. And then e5 and queen g4 and uh, the game goes on. But uh, yeah, h4, really quite uh, quite hilarious, I have to say. But after knight e2, um, we got d6 here. So uh, Stoflace not uh, playing uh, bishop b4, just uh, playing d6 and yeah, uh, just developing um, sort of solidly. And now d5 from uh, from Echisatum. This is uh, a possible plan. Um, Castle Kingside was um, uh, also featured in my engine games. This was Dragon's Choice, Knight bd7, f4, which is also quite uh, uh, quite a nice plan. You know, uh, again, making use of this uh, knight on e2 to move the, the pawn to f4 very quickly. Uh, d5 is sort of uh, more of a positional idea, really. I mean, you're just uh, trying to set up this, um, uh, this uh, pawn block on the... Um, uh, on the h1 a8 diagonal and make this bishop on b7 passive um, so you've also maybe got an idea of taking on e6 and then playing a knight to f4 or d4 and attacking the weak pawn on e6 so still place played uh, takes takes and then bishop e7 obviously um, yeah the pawn on d5 is never hanging um, for example um, something like um, a bishop b5 check rather and um, something like c6, we can go queen takes d5, which is uh, very nice. c takes b5, and then queen b7. So um, bishop b7 was played, knight d4, um, and then castles and castles. And um, yeah, I mean, we still got some uh, some ideas here. Obviously, if you take on d5, I think I can take, take, and I think just queen h5 will work quite well, hitting uh, uh, those two. So, um, yeah, I mean, this pawn on d5 is just not uh, not safe. So Stoflace played knight bd7. So uh, abandoning control of this square, but, yeah, trying to get a knight to e5 or to c5. You have to develop somehow. And, uh, well, I liked what uh, Eki Satum did, really. Just, um, uh, yeah, just bringing the pieces into the king side. After rook e1, um, a6 was, uh, was played here. Just, uh, I mean, basically, you're trying to take control of b5, so trying to make, oops, knight c6 a little bit less dangerous. Can't defend um, a pawn on c6 from b5, for example. Or you can't play bishop b5 and then come in with bishop c6 or knight c6. But this gives white the opportunity to head in the opposite direction. So knight f5, rook e8, bishop g5. And this is already looking quite, uh, quite tempting here. Bishop f8 from Stoflace, just getting out of the pin. And now knight e4 here, just uh, lining up on uh, the knight on f6. And rook e5, queen f3 brings us to, um, to the diagram. 
um, or rather the uh, the position that I highlighted before. Now, I mean, Black's got to be really careful here. I mean, uh, actually, to be honest, if uh, if Black doesn't do anything at all, why could even play a move like c4, reinforce the pawn on d5, and then work out exactly how to exploit all this pr pressure? So Black really has to um, has to start uh, forcing White to attack now. Otherwise, it'll just get much worse. So Bishop d5 was played by uh, by Stoflace. And now uh, the tactics really start. So knight h6 check, very nice move. Um, if you go g takes h6, I'll go bishop takes f6, which is quite nice. So I'm threatening something like queen g3 check. Um, if knight f6, obviously just knight f6, followed by knight takes d5. Um, and if you go bishop takes e4, I go queen g4 check. Um, and after rook g5, then uh, there's simply bishop takes g5, h g5, bishop e4. And, uh, you know, white's basically emerged there with, um, uh, well, you know, some, uh, some, uh, some, extra, some extra material and um, a very weak uh, black king. So, uh, yeah, something like rook b8, I just go uh, h4, for example. So after knight h6, king h8 was played by, uh, by Stoflace. And now um, knight takes f6, a lovely move. Queen is on priest, but if bishop f3, of course, we've got knight takes f7 checkmate. So that's the, uh, the first brilliancy there. Um, now I'm a little bit surprised by what uh, Stoflace played. I mean, g takes f6, well, takes takes, knight f7 check, king g7, knight d8, rook d8. Um, you know, it's an end game and, you know, it feels like you might be able to defend this. Certainly if, I, you know, human player, I think would definitely head for this. The engines, don't seem to think very much of it um, and uh, stockfish beat dragon and dragon beat stockfish from it but yeah materials equal okay better pawns for white rooks a little bit loose in uh, in the center a6 pawn is hanging but yeah you still think that uh, some defense might be possible but the engines didn't consider that to be uh, you know any better at all if knight f6 we go queen takes d5 again and if knight d5 we go knight f7 knight g5 rook g5 knight e6 Rook e5, c4, um, knight f6, knight takes c7, and uh, yeah, white's a pawn up. Opposite coloured uh, bishop ending. So again, you know, it's something where you might say, well, human game might be worth a try, but again, the engines don't seem to believe this at all. Um, dragon beating stockfish, stockfish beating dragon. So um, uh, still plays play queen takes f6, which is undoubtedly the most uh, spectacular line. Just um, uh, putting the uh, the queen on priest, but of course the, uh, uh, the the white queen is on priest as well. And now, um, you know, rather than trying to win the exchanges or anything like that, um, got a rather nice sequence. Queen h3. So, um, um, yeah, I mean, the big point is that uh, something like, um, for example, queen takes g5. We've just got knight takes f7 check. And after bishop f7, there's queen takes h7 checkmate. So black plays queen e6. Um, just, uh, yeah, hitting the queen on h3, and after knight f7, then king g8. Now, I mean, uh, you know, white could just decide here just to play knight takes e5, and then the queens get exchanged, and then we go knight e5. Should be better for white, this, of course, as well. But, um, um, yeah, Echisatum uh, took the praiseworthy decision to go for the king side attack. So that's queen takes h7 check now, king f7. It's a, it's a peace sacrifice. I mean, it's not obvious at first glance that this is actually going to be winning somehow. But as you'll see, uh, Black's big problem is that all of his pieces are actually rather getting in the way of each other and rather badly placed. Um, but it's not obvious at a casual glance. I only really noticed when, uh, or understood it rather, when um, when playing uh, uh, when playing through games and saying, "Oh God, this one's hanging!" My goodness. So uh, Rook takes e5 played, and now there's. Um, uh, well, two moves. I mean, d takes c5 was played in the game, knight e5. Actually, we just go bishop f5 in this position. The black queen's very short of squares, queen e8. And then the move f4. And uh, this was the slightly shocking thing. Knight f3 check from black. So um, if gf, we've got queen e3 check, which rather turns things around. But why goes king to, king to f2 here? And, uh, well, I mean, what sort of threats have we got? We've got queen h5 check here, bishop g6 as ideas. And after knight takes uh, g5, hitting the queen. I mean, f takes g5 was uh, dragon's idea. Bishop g6, king e1, rook e1 check, bishop e6, f takes g5 was uh, uh, Stockfish's idea. 
and the idea is queen c6 we go bishop f5 and we just kind of pick up this uh, this bishop um, again you know it's uh, quite striking that you're not mating or anything you're just winning your piece back with an extra pawn and uh, a very weak black king for example this was the continuation of a stockfish dragon game queen g6 queen d7 h4 and uh, well if nothing happens we'll at the very least we'll just move the h pawn up all the way but um, yeah quite striking but this is uh, knight takes c5 is not better d takes c5 uh, uh, is played and then bishop f5 and now black has to put the queen somewhere. Um, queen d6, you get hit by um, by rook d1, um, followed by something like c4. So um, um, Stoflace played queen c6, and now a great move, c4. And this move is really difficult for um, for black to deal with. The black's big problem actually is that the king is really in the kill zone and um, uh, doesn't get out very easily. I mean, if we play a move like uh, queen takes c4, then simply queen h5 check is completely winning. The king can't escape here or here or here. And after king g8, we go bishop h7 and just mate. Really, uh, you know, very unpleasant for black this. So that's already nasty. I mean, we can't allow c takes d5. You know, white gets the piece back with a massive attack. So, you know, um, bishop c4 is what Stove played. Bishop g2 is really what you'd want to play. Um, but then we go rook d1. And now, uh, for example, something like knight c5. And then this move was, uh, I think this was Stockfish's move, rook d5. What a move there, what a move. So, um, um, yeah, the idea again is that if bishop d5, we can play this move. Uh, um, c takes d5, and again, if you take on d5, I've got this move, queen h5. King is again in the kill zone. Well, we'd even have a bishop e4 check to uh, to escape there. So bishop f3 was played by, um, I think it was, uh, oh, this was Stockfish against Dragon. Um, and then rook takes e5. Again, we're you know we're kind of cutting off the king there. Rook e8, bishop g6, queen g6, and now this lovely intermediate move, rook f5 check. And after takes takes, queen f3. That's the end of uh, of the story. You know, white's just uh, winning queen and uh, pawn for rook and knight. But these are you know very difficult variations. Again, a human game, you just take on g2 straight away and. Uh, and not worry about it at all you know this is just uh there's another nice line which i should probably show you uh, knight f6 was another game queen g6 we take on f6 we give a little check we give another check we give another check we give a check on d7 king f8 and now this gorgeous move bishop e6 when uh we're just threatening queen g8 checkmate there and after queen e6 we go rook g7 and we're threatening uh um queen h8 checkmate now there is one nice defense here which is bishop d5 from black, because if c takes d5, we go queen g4 check. And we've just got a little perpetual here, which is very, very nice. But uh, white's got the great idea. Um, well, there's other moves as well, but rook g6 is the cleanest there. So we're just covering the g4 square, and then we're just going to take on d5 and deliver mate somehow. So, um, yeah, very, very nice from uh, from both Dragon and Stockfish. Really just uh, incredible ideas in there. So Bishop takes c4 is played. But now, actually, there's a slight problem because, um, you know, we've got uh, a, a possible pin here uh, on the uh, uh, h1a8 diagonal with Bishop e4. That's an extra resource. So Rook c1 played. Um, rook d1 is also pretty powerful, but um, Eki Satan played Rook c1. Um, and well we're just threatening uh, b3 in actual fact they're just uh, going to pick up that piece and then remain with all of our attack against the king so I mean that's the, the big thing that black's got to do I mean black's always got to um, to try and um, um, well keep material you know survive but also keep material and now after queen d6 well this is just a, a simple little tactic rook c4 allows queen d1 checkmate and I really like the next move just h4 um, because uh, it's not only giving some space to the king, this h-pawn is also going to be part of the attack, you know, whether supporting uh, a check on g6 or just going all the way h6, h7, h8. So uh, lovely multi-purpose stuff there. Now, none of this is particularly um, obvious somehow. Um, you know, you could try and just move your uh, bishop somewhere, bishop b5, and then this move bishop c2 was absolutely gorgeous. Um, threatening rook d1 actually so supporting the rook on d1 also threatening bishop b3 check so it's really all over the place and uh, one of the nice things was after knight c5 queen check g6 we go queen f3 that's the other point of bringing the back bishop back from f5 we can force this we can fork this uh, loose rook on a8 as well 
just the tactics all over the place and you know they're all actually really important to notice all these tactical details otherwise you know you couldn't really say that it was going to work but um, yeah it's a bit tough for a human player b5 was played and now just the quiet uh, b3 here it's an absolutely gorgeous move if you go back to d5 now then rook c7 is the key idea because again after queen c7 we've got our queen h5 H, uh, check mechanism this is checkmate and uh, king g8 we've again got bishop h7 bishop g6 and uh, queen h7 checkmate so yeah um, bishop c6 um, was the uh, the best idea and now this move uh, h5 you know and uh, um, again, you know, it's just uh, you're just uh, bringing in this guy. Um, you know, you've you've brought this guy into uh, into play for uh, for attacking, and now he's just going to uh, you know just going to do the business basically. Uh, you're going to end up with uh, with an h6 coming in here as well. So um, actually, it was even quite funny because e4 was uh, was the continuation of Stockfish Dragon, and then just Queen g6 just uh, picks up the uh, the bishop on c6. So um, bishop e2 was played by Stoflace, and now h5. Just, uh, yeah. And again, there are, you know, many other moves. I mean, we could play bishop e4, which is quite powerful. Just, uh, you know, also giving yourself some ideas, some checks and some rook c6s as well. But um, um, but h5 was prepared by Kisatum, just, um, you know, getting this, uh, this pawn rolling. Knight f6, bishop g6, king e6, bishop f6. And this was the, the final gorgeous point, that after king f6 we played bishop e4, and that's actually threatening several things. Um, first of all, it's threatening bishop takes a8, but you might uh, have a quick check to see whether you spot it. It's also threatening rook c6, um, pinning the, uh, the queen to the king. I mean, really, ah, there's so many gorgeous tactics here. And after king e7, um, well, rook c6 was played. Bishop a8 just wins, of course, but uh, Eki Satan just kept on attacking. Queen d1, king h2. Um, we're threatening rook takes c7 check here, which is quite unpleasant. So queen d7 played. And now this move h6. So uh, we're just bringing this h pawn in. We're threatening h takes g7, but the queen can also move away with tempo. And then we might get, just get h7, h8 in. So uh, quite incredible. And after queen g4, rook check, king d6, and then hg. Very nice move because the rook is defending this. Obviously, if you go king c7, I've got g takes f8, queen. So uh, take on g7, rook takes g7, check g3, queen f2. All of a sudden looks scary. But, um, but actually it's not that scary. The black king is, um, uh, is right in the center. The queen's covering the h file and obviously yeah, we've got all sorts of uh, threats coming in. Rook d7s or rook g6s or whatever. Bishop f3 was played by uh, Stoflace but uh, queen d3 check um, actually uh, forks the king and the bishop. Um, so um, got to be just a little bit careful but um, queen d4 played here and now um, just important to be uh, a little bit careful because queen f3, rook h8 check, bishop h3, queen d2 is actually just drawing, um, bizarrely enough. Because if you go queen g2, I take check and go queen h6 check and pick up the rook on g7, which would be tragic in actual fact. But um, uh, there's many better moves. And um, yeah, rook g6 check puts the rook on a, on a comfortable position. And after king c5, Queen c2 check, king b4, bishop f3. Taking with a bishop on f3, we've cunningly given our king the g2 square, so there's nothing, no danger there at all. After e4, queen e4, takes, takes. The game didn't take long, and uh, Eki Satan beats Stoflace there. So that was a very nice game indeed. I mean, obviously the opening was quite ropey for uh, for Stoflace, but still, you know, it's uh, not easy for uh, for new engines to beat uh, engines of the caliber of, uh, of Stoflace, and... Uh, yeah, this was a, a very impressive way of doing it. I mean, I think in particular, I mean, uh, I just liked the number of tactical motifs that were, you know, taking place and uh, stuff like, um, um, yeah, you know, in, uh, in, in this sort of position, uh, queen c6, c4, and then all the things happening, every single bishop uh, capture or bishop move just had a different problem. And also, I think it also reflects, you know, very 
common defensive problem that when you're material ahead, you not only have to defend against threats very often, you also have to keep that extra material. So you have to defend whilst keeping your extra material because if you ever lost that extra material, your whole position would be wrecked and you'd have absolutely no compensation. And I think that's often slightly underestimated as a, you know, the difficulty of, uh, of defending these positions. And um, yeah, finally, I just like very much, um, you know, uh, moving along with uh, Queen D6, this move H4 and the idea that, uh, you know, as well as defending against a back rank mate threat, you're also, that's also it ends up being a, a crucial extra unit that makes the final breakthrough on the king side. Really, really nice there. So there we are. Hope you enjoyed that, uh, that game. If you liked the video, why not give a like, subscribe to the channel, take a look at my new books, Silicon Road to Chess Improvement and Reengineering the Chess Classics full of great analysis about uh, engines like this as well as huge number of tips about how to uh, how to work with engines and um, how to improve your own chess and uh, otherwise thanks very much for watching and hope to see you uh, for the next videos thanks for watching